Greetings. Welcome to the MetaFast first quarter 2024 earnings conference call. At this time, all participants are in a listen-only mode. A question and answer session will follow the formal presentation. If anyone should require operator assistance at a conference, please press star zero on your telephone keypad. I will now turn the conference over to your host, Stephen Zanker, Vice President of Investor Relations. You may begin. Good afternoon, and welcome to MetaFast's first quarter 2024 earnings conference call. On the call with me today are Dan Chard, Chairman and Chief Executive Officer, and Jim Maloney, Chief Financial Officer. By now, everyone should have access to the earnings release for the quarter ended March 31st, 2024, that went out this afternoon at approximately 4.05 p.m. Eastern Time. If you have not received the release, it is available on the Investor Relations portion of MetaFast website at www.metafastinc.com. This call is being webcast, and a replay will also be available on the company's website. Before we begin, we would like to remind everyone that today's prepared remarks contain forward-looking statements, and management may make additional forward-looking statements in response to your questions. The words believe, expect, anticipate, and other similar expressions generally identify forward-looking statements. These statements do not guarantee future performance, and therefore under-reliance should not be placed on them. Actual results could differ materially from these projected in any forward-looking statements. All of the forward-looking statements contained herein speak only as of the date of this call. MetaFast assumes no obligation to update any forward-looking statements that may be made in today's release or call. And with that, I would like to turn the call over to MetaFast Chairman and Chief Executive Officer, Dan Chard. Thank you, Steve, and thank you all for joining us today. With me today is Jim Maloney, MetaFast CFO. I'll give you an update on the progress we're making in our continued business transformation, and Jim will then provide an update on our quarterly financial results. Medical innovation is empowering more people than ever before to achieve their weight loss goals, and that presents a remarkable opportunity for MetaFast as an organization. The expanding use of GLP-1 medications for weight loss, as well as expected further innovations in the medically supported weight loss space, is creating new markets in both the care and support segments of the weight loss industry. It is anticipated that these two areas will become an integral part of the health and wellness journeys of many individuals. As more and more people begin to use medication and make the necessary lifestyle modifications to help achieve greater long-term health and wellness outcomes. For MetaFast, the focus of our business transformation is to build a set of differentiated capabilities that will allow us to be a leader in this dynamic and changing health and wellness space. Consistent with our historical focus, we will also continue to support other related health outcomes that are tied to adopting healthy lifestyle habits. With our recent moves to expand our product offerings and target supporting individuals in the medically supported weight loss market, we believe we have significantly expanded our total addressable market by broadening the scope of our consumer offer. Independent research that we commissioned shows that approximately 50% of our prospective customers would consider using GLP-1 medications to aid in their weight loss. As such, it is clear that this high growth area offers considerable opportunity and fits well with our expertise with over 40 years of history of helping people improve their overall health and wellness. Lifestyle modifications remains as relevant and important as ever and is an important element to long-term success in the weight loss for those on medications. In fact, the medications themselves are required to be prescribed by licensed clinicians and include instructions for the user to make lifestyle modifications. And we believe our offering and network of Optavia coaches make us uniquely qualified to provide this support. In a clinical study of the new generation of GLP-1 medications, people that were on a placebo instead of medications and who followed lifestyle modification guidance lost 3 to 5% of their initial body weight. Weight loss for those who used GLP-1 medications and followed lifestyle modification guidance was 15 to 21% of their initial body weight, inclusive of both the effects of the medication as well as the benefits from lifestyle modification. 
Sales of GLP-1 medications alone are projected by many to reach up to $100 billion or more by the year 2030. This, is, this opens up a huge opportunity to provide support products and services to this rapidly growing consumer base. A recent BCG study commissioned by Metafast determined that the GLP-1 support market, which includes products and services purchased by those on GLP-1 medications, excluding those medication costs, is roughly $13 billion today and could grow to $50 billion or more by the year 2030. Individuals on GLP-1 medications are currently spending an average of around $200 a month on nutritional shakes, bars, vitamins, and other related items to aid in their efforts to improve their overall health and wellness in conjunction with the medications, according to the same BCG study. Support from nutrition products for those on weight loss and medications, however, is just part of the lifestyle modification equation a holistic program that includes personalized support to help people learn new lifestyle habits and stay accountable on their transformation journey is another important element to helping individuals succeed in their health and wellness journeys. One of the primary goals of such a program is muscle maintenance to avoid the 20 to 50 percent weight loss from lean muscle mass that many GLP-1 medication users suffer as part of their experience. The fact is that since we launched Optavia just under eight years ago, we've gleaned some important insights. We know that people do better in their health and weight loss when they have a coach, and they also do better when they're able to plug into a community of like-minded people. It's also abundantly clear that people do better when they learn healthy habits and can leverage them into the creation of a healthier lifestyle. A clinical study sponsored by Metafest showed that those on the optimal weight 5-in-1 plan with support of an Optavia coach successfully lost 10 times more weight and 17 times more fat than those who tried to lose weight on their own. While the health and wellness environment may now have changed due to the weight loss medications, these insights have helped drive our strategic focus as we continue to transform our business. Coaches and now clinicians are integral to success. So we will offer a holistic solution that puts support from them at the heart of people's health and weight loss journey. We will integrate customers into a welcoming and engaging community that is on the same journey as each of these individuals. By plugging into what we already do best and adjusting to meet the nature of today's medical innovation, we can offer integrated solutions that align with customer demand and behaviors. In collaboration with LifeMD, a leading telehealth provider, we are now able to deliver a unique, holistic offer for consumers who want to use GLP-1 medications that helps them achieve their personal health and weight loss goals. With Optavia coaches and LifeMD clinicians working together, we provide consumers with the nutrition, education, and support necessary to help make living a healthy lifestyle second nature. An integrated solution is more efficient targets a much broader market opportunity and should increase the lifetime value of our customers. That will be important in helping to offset an expected decline in our average monthly revenue per new customer that signs up for a medically supported weight loss solution, which will be offered at a lower monthly cost than our historical program. While we recognize that GLP-1 usage is accelerating rapidly and should continue to do so for many years, we remain completely customer focused as an organization rather than the single solution oriented. In other words, we listen closely to the unique circumstances of each individual and then work to find the weight loss and health transformation approach that is right for each of them. Sometimes that could mean using a medication. Other times that might mean learning to adopt healthy habits and sometimes it might mean utilizing support products to help make the wellness journey easier. Regardless of each unique pathway, the presence of a coach and a community creates a platform that helps drive positive end outcomes and that has helped positively impact the lives of more than 3 million people to date. Turning to our first quarter results, they came in largely as expected with continued headwinds impacting customer acquisition primarily from the macro factors, including the growing popularity of GLP-1 medications. We ran a promotion from March, which extended into early April, and this did provide a small lift, 
but we believe that the right now, a much more effective way to grow our business is to focus our resources on building out new channels for customer acquisition through both a LifeMD collaboration and company-led marketing. Jim will go more into the quarterly details shortly. Regarding our collaboration with LifeMD, we are pleased with our execution to date, and we continue to make progress on rolling out our integrated offer. Next month, we intend to take a key interim step in that rollout as we begin offering a GLP-1 support nutrition package in conjunction with LifeMD at a price point of as low as $282 per month plus the cost of any medication for a six-month commitment. The package will include a lifestyle program with a dedicated Optavia coach, balanced nutrition options with our GLP-1 nutrition support kit, and through LifeMD, access to a medical provider and blood work, and prescription and insurance support. Over the upcoming months, we will continue to refine the model and evaluate and test the effectiveness and adoption rates of the offer. We expect to add further improvements to the care and support process as we move through the second half of the year, including enhancing the website and the apps utilized by our customers and coaches. We are working diligently on developing the technology to allow for an enhanced customer experience and expects to roll out incremental improvements throughout the rest of the year. These are expected to create a more cohesive way for customers to sign up and remit payments for the holistic offer as well as additional functionality to make the user experience easier and more integrated with LifeMD's capabilities. We are also working to develop new products specifically for those on GLP-1 medications, which are currently expected to be ready late in the year. As we have previously disclosed, we will be making a significant investment in marketing at the company level. Metafast is committed to driving growth and enhancing brand visibility through a $30 million investment in company-led marketing efforts throughout 2024. This high-profile national campaign led by Dentsu Creative, a renowned global marketing and advertising firm, and Ice Prospect, a leader in performance digital marketing, aims to drive customer conversion, elevate brand awareness, and foster engagement with new and existing customers. With an omni-channel approach, the Digital First campaign is expected to introduce new branding and elevate the website and digital experience. These investments will ramp up later in the second quarter and even more so in the second half of the year, helping form the foundation of the company's strategy to return to growth and in broadening and deepening our acquisition channels to focus on three key pillars, our marketing initiatives, the expansion of our coaching network, and our strategic collaboration with LifeMD to collectively drive forward our mission to empower individuals on their journey to optimal health and well-being. Importantly, our company-led marketing efforts and our collaboration with LifeMD gives us two new channels for acquiring customers, in addition to the traditional channel, where our coaches source customers via their own word-of-mouth campaigns in their local communities and in social media. I've talked about our coaches and how they are at the center of everything we do. This is a clear differentiator for Metafast versus others in our industry. The vast majority of our coaches started as Optavia customers and therefore understand the mindset and needs of someone looking to better their overall health. Efforts have been underway for a while regarding the coaches learning about the GLP-1 market and the specific needs and challenges faced by those utilizing the medications. With a more complete offer to take to their prospective customers, including access to weight loss medications through a LifeMD clinician, in addition to our line of nutrition products and support from a coach and a community that is on a similar journey, the value that the coaches can bring to their customers has never been more compelling. There can be little doubt that the weight loss market has seen seismic changes over the past 18 months as medically supported weight loss adoption has accelerated more rapidly than perhaps anyone could have expected. But with that uptick in consumer focus comes significant opportunity. With a comprehensive, holistic approach that brings together customers, coaches, and clinicians, Metafast is uniquely positioned to provide the nutritional and healthy lifestyle support that GLP-1 users need to achieve their lifelong transformation that they're seeking.
We believe that Metafast has the financial strength and strategic flexibility to invest in our ongoing operational and marketing effectiveness and the scientific and medical heritage that provides us with the credibility to play in this rapidly developing space. Most importantly, we have an experienced team that has shown a consistent ability to pivot and take advantage of the opportunities as they emerge and a strategy in place working alongside world-class partners to help deliver on the exciting possibilities ahead. We look forward to sharing more on our progress on future calls. Now I'll turn it over to Jim to review the quarter. Thank you, Dan. Good afternoon, everyone. 2024 first quarter results were in line with our guidance as we continue to execute our business transformation initiatives that we believe are integral to our success. Revenue for the first quarter of $175 million was at the upper end of our guidance range of $155 to $175 million, a 49.9% decrease versus the year earlier period, primarily driven by continued pressure on customer acquisition amid the growth in popularity of weight loss medications, which has led to a decline in the number of active earning Optavia coaches and lower productivity per active earning Optavia coach. We ended the first quarter with approximately 37,800 active earning Optavia coaches, a decrease of 35.6% from the first quarter of 2023. Average revenue per active earning Optavia coach for the first quarter was $4,623 a year-over-year -year decline of 22.2%, reflecting the continued headwinds to customer acquisition. Gross profit decreased 48.3% to $127.3 million for the first quarter of 2024, driven by lower revenue. Gross profit margin improved 220 basis points to 72.8%, positively impacted by efficiencies in inventory management and cost savings from the Fuel for the Future initiatives, partially offset by increased shipping costs. SG&A expense was down 38.1% to $119.4 million for the first quarter of 2024, primarily due to fewer active earning coaches and decreased coach compensation on lower volumes partially offset by the start of company-led advertising expenses, which continues to be in the early stages, as well as market research and investment cost related to medically supported weight loss. SG&A, as a percentage of revenue, increased 1,300 basis points to 68.3%, primarily as a result of the loss of leverage of fixed costs due to lower sales volumes as well as factors I just mentioned. On a non-GAAP adjusted basis, which excludes one-time cost to initiate and operationalize the LifeMD collaboration, SG&A decreased 38.8% to $118 million and moved 1,220 basis points higher as a percent of revenue to 67.5%. Income from operations was $7.9 million in the first quarter of 2024, down 85.2% .2 versus the year earlier period, driven by lower gross profit, partially offset by lower SG&A. As a percentage of revenue, income from operations was 4.5% in the first quarter, a 1,080 basis point decline versus the year earlier level. On a non-GAAP adjusted basis, which excludes the one-time expenses described previously, income from operations decreased 82.7% to $9.3 million. As a percentage of revenue, non-GAAP adjusted income from operations was 5.3%, a decrease of 1,000 basis points from the year ago period. The effective tax rate was 28.2% was higher than the 25.1% recorded in the prior year's first quarter due to an increase in the tax shortfall for stock compensation and the rate impact of research and development tax credits 
partially offset by the decrease in the limitation for executive compensation and various other miscellaneous items. On a non-GAAP adjusted basis, the effective tax rate in the first quarter was 28.7%. Net income in the first quarter of 2024 was $8.3 million, or 76 cents per diluted share, compared to $40 million, or $3.67 per diluted share in the year earlier period. On a non-GAAP adjusted basis, net income in the first quarter of 2024, which excludes the mark-to-market -market adjustment of our LifeMD stock holdings, as well as the one-time cost to initiate the LifeMD collaboration, was $7.2 million, or $0.66 cents per diluted share. Turning to our balance sheet, we ended the quarter with $156.4 million in cash, cash equivalents, and investments and no interest-bearing debt. This is up from $150 million as of December 31st, 2023. Now I'll turn to our guidance. We are expecting second quarter revenue to range from $150 to $170 million, reflecting continued near-term challenges to customer acquisition as a result of the growth of GLP-1 medications in the marketplace. We expect our EPS for the quarter to range from $0.05 cents to $0.40. Cents. The EPS range excludes the cost related to the initiation of LifeMD collaboration and any gains and losses from changes in the market price of our LifeMD common stock. While the operating environment remains challenging, we continue to believe that meaningful spending on driving customer acquisition from two additional sources, company-led marketing and customer flow from LifeMD and the ability to offer access to clinicians will lead to an improvement in customer acquisition trends beginning late in the year. To foster that improvement, we expect to spend around $30 million this year on advertising and other marketing initiatives to increase the visibility and customer engagement around our Optavia brand and its offerings. An elevated level of spending is expected to continue into 2025 as we believe it will be effective in bringing in new customers that will help us grow in the future. These investments in customer acquisition initiatives as well as the negative impact of lower volumes on operating leverage are expected to continue to pressure profitability over the remainder of 2024. In summary, we are steadfast in continuing our transformation journey, focusing on our integrated offering in the medically supported weight loss space, while also making strategic investments to grow the business in the future. Our strong balance sheet and continued expense reduction efforts help mitigate the short-term weakness in our results, and we expect the actions we are undertaking should drive improvement as we move into 2025 and beyond. With that, let me turn the call back to the operator for questions. Thank you. At this time, we will be conducting a question and answer session. If you would like to ask a question, please press star one on your telephone keypad. A confirmation tone will indicate your line is in the question queue. You may press star two if you would like to remove your question from the queue. For participants using speaker equipment, it may be necessary to pick up your handset before pressing the start key. Our first question comes from the line of Jim uh, Slario with Stevens Inc. Please proceed with your question. Hi guys, thanks for taking our question. Um, I, I wanted to start with the 2Q revenue guide. Uh, if I just take the midpoint, it, it looks like it's down around 46%. Uh, which isn't much different than 1Q, but I would think between the easing comp in 2Q and then the ramp up of the company-led marketing that there would be a more significant improvement there. Is there something I'm overlooking or uh, any, any color you could offer on that would be helpful? Sure, Jim. Um, this is Dan. I'm, I'm going to let Jim answer that question, but uh, just wanted to make a, a couple points that will kind of help inform um, how, we, how we're thinking about that, that guidance. Um, as you know, we've made some significant uh, progress that uh, started at the end of last year that with, with the collaboration agreement. 
Um, and importantly, as we're looking at uh, how we look forward um, at the uh, uh, the new market, um, we're specifically focused on the support market, which for the first time we're um, we're measuring, and that we're doing this through a, uh, a study that was commissioned by us with uh, with BCG that that has this support market GLP one support market uh, at 13 billion dollars this year, growing to 50 billion dollars. Um, Again, importantly, um, we've now launched a, uh, a new product bundle, um, which is now kind of bundled with what uh, is offered by LifeMD. And that, uh, that, that bundle is going to be selling for now $282. It includes both the clinician prescription, blood work, and insurance support, um, as well as uh, our traditional um, support of the coach community Nutrition support, which is which shows the, uh, the the nutrition dense fuelings, our Optavia app and uh, the Habits of Health. So that that number two hundred eighty two dollars is um, roughly uh, well, it compares to four hundred dollars uh, of what we used to um, uh, offers our introductory bundle of, for our five and one plan. So you can see there's a pretty significant um, change in that. Um, we also uh, are going to be launching a new set of products by the end of the year um, and uh, also uh, will be announcing in Q3 and Q4 some additional integration that will create a, a seamless um, payment and ordering system for the two uh, for the two platforms and so we you know we expect what we expect in the back half of the year um, is, is uh, to start to see the impacts of these initiatives so Q3 Q4 you know, first with improved coach productivity, so driven by client acquisition um, and revenue per coach, and then um, going beyond that to improved client retention as we're uh, able to to uh, keep particularly GLP-1 clients for a longer period of time. And with that, I'll, I'll turn it to Jim to ask a question about guidance. Yeah, so when you, when you consider our guidance for uh, Q2, Jim, you know, we're, we're assuming – the current headwinds on customer acquisition continue in the near term. The rollout of the advertising will not happen until the very uh, the, the latter part of Q2. So, so our guidance does not um, show that impact, and the amount of spend uh, that will happen is really tilted towards Q3. So uh, there will be a little bit higher level of um, of advertising uh, versus Q1 in Q2, but really the spend is going to occur uh, more rapidly in Q3. So that's what you're seeing there. Um, regarding... Um, uh, you know, we're making headway with LifeMD. We are seeing, uh, and we're happy with the level of uh, of um, support that we've been able to do with LifeMD. So, the number of uh, customers uh, that are going um, and using the LifeMD. Uh, solutions is increasing, uh, but we do believe it's going to take continued time. And uh, we're hopeful that we're going to see that into Q3 and beyond uh, as we have the uh, integrated solution, uh, you know, fully up and running in Q3. So hopefully that helps. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, I appreciate the color, guys. Jim, if I can maybe ask you a uh, follow-up just on the cadence of the marketing. Uh, if I read the, the slide deck right, you guys spent about $2.5 million in 1Q, which means you have you know $27.5 million for the rest of the year. Can you just give us a sense right. for how steep the ramp is in the back half? Like, yeah. if I'm, whether dollars or percentage, how much of that, you know, 3Q to 4Q? Yeah, so the... the uh, it is very steep. Uh, we're, we're expecting that uh, the level will be a, a little bit higher in Q2, and that's why you're not seeing uh, the benefit of that. 
uh, happen in Q2 versus our guidance. So uh, it's slightly higher, but it's not it's not to any degree that that would be meaningful. So we're we're still in the learning phase of this, and I tried to indicate that in my my uh, part of the script that you know we're in the early stages of this. We are going to launch um, new messaging in Q2, but it's going to be at the very end of Q2. And uh, the ramp of it uh, is is going to happen into Q3. So the majority, to answer your question specifically, the majority of the $30 million of spend will happen in Q3. Okay, perfect. Thanks, guys. I'll hop back into Q. Thank you. Our next question comes from the line of Linda Bolton Weiser with DA Davidson. Please proceed with your question. Yes, hi. Um, can you please talk about um, so in terms of the pricing for the new integrated program, my understanding is Life MD charges very low for the drug itself. Um, so the two hundred and eighty two per month is sort of all inclusive, right? I mean, it's it's the the coaching, the RX script, the blood work, and really most of the drug cost. Am I understanding that correctly? And also, can you explain how is the revenue going to be booked? Are you going to record a portion of that 282 in revenue, or are they, or is it split, or or how is that revenue split going to work? Yeah, let me answer the the first part of your question, and then I'll let Jim answer the. Uh... The revenue question. So the $282 is inclusive of both of the services from uh, our Optavia program as well as LifeMD. It does not include uh, the cost of medication. And you pointed out, uh, uh, Linda, that there there's some uh, different, very price competitive options um, through uh, LifeMD that are both branded and compounded. But the $282 uh, does not. Uh, include the cost of the medication. And the split between the two is roughly $217 for the, the product and coaching bundle and, and six, roughly $65 for a six-month commitment uh, to LifeMD. Yeah, so, Linda, we're, we're not going to be recording the $65 that, that Dan is referring to for LifeMD's portion of this. So they're gonna re they're, they would record the $65, and we would record the $217. The, the $65 for LifeMD Life uh, requires a six-month commitment. So that's, um, uh, that's the, you know, the, the commitment that you have to make uh, for LifeMD. The $217, uh, there is no uh, commitment for that number from, from a uh, customer. Sure, and then the 217 includes some food products, some fuelings, or what, clarify what that yeah. includes. It, it includes um, our, our active whey protein supplement and uh, fuelings. Um, and so both of them at a kind of uh, program designated amount for a full month. And in addition to that, includes the time and, and uh, from a coach, personalized coach, um, access to the community, um, access to the Optavia app that includes the uh, um, the, the recipes, as well as uh, weight trackers, um, which is uh, integrated with uh, a, a, a Wi-Fi scale, um, and it also includes um, the uh, access to the Habits of Health transformation system. Okay, thank you. Can I also ask, um, uh, how much, um, in terms of the Life MD use of the compounded product, um, has there been any change of av in availability of that compounded product? Because we know that at some point it may kind of go away. Are, is there any update on that? And um, 
what do you anticipate as a strategy if there is constraint of a compounded availability? Like if the drug becomes a thousand dollars a month for the customer, how do you how does the customer afford to pay another three hundred dollars a month? What what's the strategic thoughts on that? Thanks. Yeah, we're we're um you know, working very closely with the LifeMD team, who's who's very you know keyed into this uh, this key part of the questions. The strategy to date has been to uh, to offer um, a branded solution for those who are insured or who can afford to pay the out of pocket. Um, there are cases either that they may not be insured, um, or in some cases um, through the, because of the shortages the branded solutions are not available, whereas the compound solution, the solutions have, uh, have, have been uh, readily available. In the case of, you know, how long that this, this current uh, structure will last, um, that's, uh, you know, I think will be determined largely by the FDA. As you know, um, compounders operate under an exception which is that uh, they're allowed to offer a compounded solution when uh, we're in a, a period of, of, of scarcity. And uh, we continue to be in this period of scarcity that's uh, projected to, to last, um, I believe, several years uh, as, as uh, the pharmaceutical companies build more capacity. Um, I think there are some other uh, elements that uh, will impact this as well, as, as, which could include you know, how, how quickly um, insurance companies and uh, Medicare uh, cover the, uh, the 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 drugs beyond um, the current uh, um, you know exceptions. Which so I th think what what I would say is we feel confident and comfortable that uh, the approach, which is to offer both branded and a compounded solution where appropriate, uh, is appropriate is is uh, relevant for the short term and, you know, even the next several years. Okay. And then um, one of the issues, um, I guess, that is, is going to happen here is that you have a large number of coaches, even though they've declined, um, just a, a moderate amount of new people wanting the drug. LifeMD only has a, a small number of clinicians. So I, I think it's somewhere around 50, five zero clinicians that they have. How are that number of clinicians going to be able to handle um, such a large potential number of new customers for the, for the script? Like, are they planning to ramp up the number of clinicians, or can you give a little color on that? Thanks. Yeah, LifeMD Life um, specifically um, uses physicians um, in their in their services that are licensed in um, in all 50 states, um, so that that helps with part of it. They can uh, support um, uh, patients across the country. They uh, also have uh, a, a very specific and focused hiring strategy, which has allowed them to uh, to keep up with their demand. And we work in close mm -hmm. close collaboration with we're, we're working in close collaboration with them. To ensure that they understand um, how our demand could increase, and at this point, uh, we believe they have the capacity in the short term as well as the capability in the long term to uh, scale that number of, of clinicians to support uh, the growing demand. Okay, and then is there any um, just on the timing difference thing that um, the 9.1 million? Can you just Kind of explain what that is, and does that does that shift 9.1 million of revenue from first to second quarter, or can you just explain more about that? Thank you. Oh, that's that's referring to that's that's actually refer. I believe what you're referring to, uh, Linda, is last year we did a change in revenue recognition, so there's no impact to 2024. That was actually 2023, and it was in the uh, earnings release. We just were referring back to 2023. The, the reason for the change of the, the the revenue recognition was due to the change that was made with the terms and conditions 
that we have with our customers. And that all occurred in Q1 of last year. So there's, once we get past Q1, there's no impact uh, for the remainder of 2023 or, you know, going into 2024 at all. Okay, gotcha. And do you do you have an anticipation of how much capital spending will be in 2024? Yeah, I mean we're we're looking at uh, uh, you know spending uh, at the same levels or a, li a little bit more than uh, 2023. Uh, so you know we didn't really give guidance all the way for 2024, but I would say it's it's going to be at least the same level as 2023, uh, if not a little bit more than that, just because of the investments that we're making uh, regarding the seamless offer in, in the technology spend that's going to be hitting capital spend in, in those areas. Okay. And then finally, I just wanted to ask about gross margin. Um, I guess that was the area of the report that was most below m my modeling, but I kind of think I didn't fully recognize the seasonality. Like usually gross margins kind of lower in the first quarter anyways, but um, do you, do you kind of foresee like stability in gross margin percent or um, like, you know, for some reason I had modeled for the full year kind of flattish, but, um, what, is there any color you can give to help us on, on that gross margin um, outlook? Yeah, I mean, when you, when you look at the gross margin, we were 220 basis points higher than 2023. And uh, most of that uh, impact versus the prior year was due to the Fuel for the Future initiatives that we referred to, which helped uh, the helped gross margins. Uh, so I would expect uh, that gross margins would be steady uh, for the next uh, quarter. Uh, the, the reason is, is because we're really, uh, when, when you look at uh, commodity inflation, we're, we're basically seeing it to be flat for at least, for at least the next quarter. So I would expect it to be very similar. So you mean flat with compared with first quarter, flat sequentially? Correct. Flat sequentially, correct. Okay, thank you. That's very helpful. That's all I have. Thanks. Yep. Thank you. And since we have no more questions, I will now turn the call back over to CEO Dan Charge for a closing remarks. I want to thank you all for joining us today, and we look forward to speaking with you at upcoming conferences and on our second quarter earnings call in early August. Thank you. And this concludes today's conference, and you may disconnect your lines at this time. Thank you for your participation.